Hi everyone. Today is 31st of December, so we have one day left to the new year. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in the new year. Uh, and hopefully this new year will be a very good year uh, for us to share our knowledge, to help each other and have a better world. So uh, a couple of days ago I got a request from one of uh, our viewers called uh, Archin Moody. Uh, excuse me if uh, I'm pronouncing your name wrongly. So the request was create an autocomplete and today I had a chance to create uh, this. And I hope you like it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so you get uh, the new tutorials. If you like this tutorial, please like it and share it so I can continue doing this for you. So let's get started. I'm going to switch to uh, this layout and remove the or hide the JS panel for now. So just to show you how it works, uh, I'm going to just cancel this. This is the original state. I basically have autocomplete for the US states. It could be anything. So when you click on it, you get a list of uh, you know the states over here, which is you know like this. And uh, when you choose one of them, it gets selected. And then if you're not satisfied with your choice, uh, you kind of click on this cancel button, and then you can choose something else, right? Or the other way is actually start typing if you already know what state you're looking for. For example, if I start talking A, it just selects A and then R, Arizona, Arkansas, and I'm looking for Arkansas, for example, and then I click choose. And also, for example, California or I don't know, like uh, Michigan. So, all right, so let's get started. Uh, in order to create this autocomplete, uh, I have a container with a class autocomplete. I put the input that you can see over here and then I added the span which is represented by this cancel button over here and then obviously I have my dialog uh, class div which is the one that I put all my states in right in terms of uh, styling it for the parent container I gave it a background of white and then I gave it a width of 40 pixel I put two kind of box shadows on top of it which you know nicely is shown over here for the cancel button which I added a class close what you do is because I want to move it uh, back here I define the position absolute and uh, the top 10 pixel so that it vertically centers itself within this input and then the left, I use the CSS calc function. So what it does, basically, it uh, calculates whatever is the result of this formula over here. So 100% of the width, the cancel button ends up here. And then I move it back 50 pixel by using minus 50 pixel, right? And then initially, the display is none, as you can see, uh, which is this so there is no no display display none and then uh, on the I added a uh, class called visible added to it so that I change the display to block through JavaScript right the input is also pretty simple I added a little bit of a padding and the width is 100 pixel 100 percent of its parent which if you remember was 300 pixel no border no outline and then the color within that is uh, a shade of gray and uh, well this is not necessary I was experimenting so for the dialog also the width will be 100% which is the 100% of this uh, container autocomplete 300 pixel as you can see and then I initially uh, chose display none so that it doesn't show up min height of 40 pixel max height of 330 pixel overflow scroll just to give you a clue of what I mean by this is that I want the mean height to always be 40 pixel uh, meaning that if for example there is no there is uh, when you enter something and you can't find it you know it just has a bit of an extra uh, area where you can say oh your match didn't found 
uh, or wasn't found and then the max height is 330 pixel because you know we have a lot of states so that if you want to show them all it's going to be a long list right which you don't want so what I did was that I defined a max height on my dialog which is 330 which kind of shows one two three four five six elements right and you can basically calculate it through you know the padding that you've added for each of these elements and then the as I said the display is none I also use another class on top of it with display block which through JavaScript I override this with this right so uh, and the display the dialog div is all of these things I put them in a div and I put it in the dialog class so for all of the divs within this dialog class I have a padding and then I also add a transition of 0 0.2 uh, seconds for everything and obviously what I change when I hover on this element is the background right so you can see this nice transition uh, which adds to your uh, the beauty of your user experience right so pretty simple a uh, couple of things you know that you have to consider uh, is the max height so that you don't end up having a very long list on the dialog class and maybe for this close you know you want to use if in order to put it back there you choose positioning absolute right cool so now the the most important part i would say is the javascript part right and i'm using jquery if you press on this gear icon over here you can see that i have added the cdn url of jquery so uh, let's go through this javascript I'm going to switch back to the, to the other one so that I have a better sort of uh, real state or, or, or uh, real space here. Uh, so what, what happens is that I have an array in JavaScript, an array of states. I define a variable called already field false. So basically this variable gets true when my dialog gets filled with, you know, these state names. And then initially... I created a function called init dialog and that what happens is that it gets whenever it gets called whenever I click here you see so what it does is that it loops over all of my states uh, and then it adds a div containing the state name to my dialog class right so pretty simple and then I have a function clear dialog which clears the dialog so every time you know uh, I click on this. I click out. If I click on this again, I call the in. I call the init dialog, right? And if I don't clear the dialog every time, so I don't remove everything that is inside the dialog, it just gets this list of states gets added at the end of the list, and it's going to be a super long. So you have to basically uh, remove the elements before you again add those states, right? Now to the interactivity parts, you know, when I click on the input, if it's not already filled, I want the dialog to have an add class open, right? If you remember, my dialog class had a display block on the open. So what happens when I add this class through JavaScript, it overrides the display none to display block, and that basically shows the dialog, right? So that wasn't difficult. And the other part which is important is that, you know, up until now, you know, we haven't chosen anything here. So the next interactivity is when I click on these divisions. So basically what happens is that when I click on that, uh, the input with the in this input that I put here, we get, we get the value of the text of that div. So this, this over here in jQuery is actually representing the, the div, div on the dialog that I clicked right as easy as that so this this is that div that I clicked on so for example if I you know click on if I so for example if I click on this one this is the this is the this that I'm talking about here right and then I obviously uh, uh, added another function focus so what I do is that every time I click on div it changes the value 
of the input to the text of that div and also it kind of focuses as you can see the cursor here that's the meaning of focus and you can see I, I use I, I, I used the uh, chaining uh, you know functionality in jQuery so you can actually chain uh, the functions in jQuery the way I did here right the other part which is important is that when I click on a div not only I want to put the, the uh, you know the, the text uh, of that div into the inbox into the input but also I want to make sure that I sort of show this cancel button so for the close uh, selector I add a class visible which again overrides the display none to display block over here you see display none display block and then going through it then what happens is that uh, I uh, so the next thing and, and already already field variable I set it to true right because I already filled the input so the next thing is is, a, is the interactivity when I click the cancel button right so when I click the cancel button which is represented by the close uh, class in my HTML when I click on that I want the already field to become false because I'm removing this as well so it's not any more field so already field to false I again add the class uh, open to my dialog because I closed it uh, and then I want to make sure that when I cl click the cancel the value of my input gets empty and again I want the focus to be there so that you can start typing right and then I remove I remove the visible from this element again and this element as you can see within this sort of code block in this click function this element uh, is the close right so when I do this I cancel you know it removes this it hides this cancel or, or basically sets the display to none again because it removes the class visible which was display block now to the fun part of it I define a function when you start typing let's say a L it kind of selects you know Alabama or Alaska and the way I do it is that I check on on uh, on input right on input changes so how you do it is that on your input using the on function in jQuery you say whenever you know I'm inputting something uh, or entering something a character or something or do something using backslash or whatever on my input element I want the dialog to show up again I want to say the already field is false because I'm starting to removing it and then I call this function passing the value that I have in my input right so for example right now the value is al and this function is a very simple function so what I do is that because sometimes you have like capital cases you know and lower cases I want to make sure whatever I type here uh, matches so I convert my string if for example if it's for example let's say a l it, it gets converted to lowercase and then I clear the dialog obviously and then I loop over my states again JavaScript has this nice function called starts with right so I check I also convert my state you know when I'm looping over the states I convert my state to lowercase so not only I lowercase the input which is whatever I type here but also I lowercase the state when I'm looping through it right so for all of my states when I look through them uh, I, I convert them to lowercase and then I check if they start with the, the string that I passed to right which is this then if that's the case since I cleared the dialog it goes ahead and adds div with those selected states you know that gets reflected using this div to that dialog right which is pretty easy so ala you can see that it goes over the states it, it checks this statement it does does the state that I'm that I'm checking right now starts with a l a yes so it appends a div with that state you know uh, to the dialog class 
right? So that's super easy again, nothing very special. And then the last thing is that, you know, you want to make sure that whenever the user clicks out of the area, you want to make sure that it actually hides this, right? So when I click out of this area, it kind of hides my dialog, which is very important, right? Sometimes you want this to, to be open because it's, uh, it's something that you want the user to focus on. But most of the time, you want to make sure that if the user decided to not go through this and do something else in your page, when they click on something else, it, this automatically gets hidden. And the way you do that is that you give, you add a click handler on the body and then you check. You pass the, you pass the event, you know, the event uh, parameter of the click and then you check if the target, right, if the target is not this because that's where you click to, to open it, right? So the target is anything but not this input and also this cancel, right? So if I press this cancel, I want to see it, you know, if I press this input, I want to see it, whatever else I don't want. So you check with the is function of jQuery if the target of my event is not, so you can see the not operator that I'm using here. If it's not input and if it's not of class close, I want to remove the class open from the dialog, which removes the display block and it, uh, and it leaves it with the display none, which basically removes it, right? And of course, at the end of everything, you know, I call the init dialog, which is this one, which populates my dialog so that when I click on it in the first time, I get this list, right? All right, so yes, that's about it. I, I hope you like this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions or any concerns, any feedback to improve the video. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And the next tutorial hopefully will come next year. Have a good day, happy new year, and goodbye.